Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope you all are fine and having a great time. Today we are going to learn about selection sort. We will see what is selection sort, its code, we will calculate its time complexity and we will see how it will be performed. First we will see what is selection sort. Selection sort is in place sorting algorithm. This means that the items that needs to be sorted occupies the same storage as the original one. What selection sort do is, it finds the minimum element in the array in every iteration and then place it with the current index that is being hold and then it swaps both the values. This sorting algorithm can be divided into sorted and unsorted subarrays. Selection sort is not a stable algorithm. This is because in stable algorithm, the two objects or the values with equal keys appears in the same order. But in this, that is not possible. So the selection sort is not a stable algorithm. We will see how sorting will be done in selection sort. Also we will see its flowchart. We will calculate its time complexity and also see the complete code in C++ language. First we will see how sorting will be done in selection sort. We will take an example of array and do sorting using selection sort. Let's say we will set current minimum value with red arrow and current item with green for better understanding. And also keep remember the if condition that is being used to sort the array. That if the current item in the array is smaller than the minimum index in the array then we will update the minimum index and after that we will swap the values. Let's say we have an array of size 6 that contains some values and we have to sort the array. At the beginning we will set the current minimum and the current item at the first index. Now the current item will move forward if we find the minimum value value which is less than the current minimum then he will update the current minimum value and is 78 is less than 62 yes so the current minimum value will be updated the current item will again move forward is the current item is less than the current minimum yes he will again update the current minimum value the current item will move forward until he reaches to the last index. This time the current minimum value is smaller. So the current minimum value will not be updated. Now the current item has completed its first iteration and the minimum value of the first iteration is 15. Now 15 will be swapped by the first index. 78 and 15 will be swapped and the new array we will get 15, 62, 78, 49, 36 and 84. After one iteration we have the minimum value at the first index. Now for the second iteration the current minimum and current item will be start from the index 1. Again, the current item will move forward and find the minimum value. It is still smaller, so the current minimum value will not be updated. Here, the current item is smaller than the current minimum, so the current minimum value will be updated. Current item will move forward. Again, current item is smaller than the current minimum. current item will move forward and reaches to the last index and the minimum value found at the second iteration is 36. So the 36 will be swapped by the first index. The next array after second iteration we will get 15, 36, 78, 49, 62 and 84. The third iteration we will start current minimum and current item from second index. Again current item will move forward 
current item is smaller than the current minimum so it will again update himself current item will move forward forward at this point 49 is the minimum so it will be swapped by the second index which is 78 after that the next array we will get is this time current minimum and current item will be start from the third index current item will move forward until he finds the minimum current item is smaller the current minimum will be updated current item will move forward 62 is smaller in this iteration so it will be swapped third index current minimum and current item will be start from 78 current item will move forward and nothing will be swapped for the last index we don't have to have to check because the array has already been sorted let's see flowchart of selection sort keep remember the if condition that we have used to sort the array first we will start by reading the array and also reading its length you will also see how we can read the array and find out its length without giving the hard code value after that as we have seen previously we will start the array from index 0 so for the outer low we will start the iteration from 0 and we will traverse the array till it reaches to the last index if the condition i is less than n minus 1 because we don't need to check the last index so we will read the array till n minus 1 as the condition is true so we will set the minimum index equal to 1 as we have seen previously and when this condition gets false it means the array has already been sorted so we will just display this array after that we have to iterate for the if condition in which we will check the current minimum and the current item for that we need to start the inner loop from i plus 1 because we don't need to check the same index twice and we will read the inner loop till the last index because we have to check all the indexes to find the minimum element when this statement is true we will run the condition that if the current item is less than the current minimum we will update the minimum index after that we will jump to the next index when this statement gets false, it means that we have found the minimum index in the iteration and after that we will swap the value with the ith index. After that, we will increment in the outer loop and it goes back to the condition. Same thing happen until the outer loop condition does not get false. After that, we have the sorted array at the last. Now let's see the complete code. We have initialized array with six values. In n, we have found the length of the array. Selection sort is a function in which we are passing array and the length of array. And at the end, we are displaying the array. Let's see the function of selection sort. As we have seen previously, the outer loop will run from i index till n minus 1. And we will set the minimum index i and the inner loop will start from the next index till the last index because we have to iterate the whole array and if the current item is less than the current minimum then it will update himself and after finding the minimum value it will swap with the ith index whether it will find the minimum index or not it must have to iterate all the values because he has to check at all conditions this is the simple swap functions that is being used to swap the values and the print function which will display the array at the end. Now let's calculate the time complexity of selection sort. As we can see the outer loop is running from i equal to 0 to i less than n minus 1. This means that this loop is running from 0 to n minus 1 which is equal to n iterations. After that the inner loop is running from i plus 1 to the last index which means that it is also running n iterations as we have discussed previously that whether he found the minimum element or not 
algorithm will always run through the complete array. That's why both the loops will run from 0 to n. And by combining both the loops, we can conclude that the time complexity of selection sort is big O n square. As he have to iterate all the values, whether he finds the minimum or not, the best or and worst case of selection sort will also be big O n square, as he has to iterate all the values. We have seen the performance of selection sort, its flowchart, how sorting will be done in selection sort, and also we have calculated its time complexity. Hope to see you again in the next sorting algorithm.